Our society is so engraved in the technology of today that we forget about the humble beginnings of yesterday. The year is 1878. In the middle of the flat plains of Mississippi, your closest neighbor in any direction is a mile out, meaning days, if not weeks, of solitude and isolation. So it might not surprise you that many of the ranchers and farmers in these isolated regions built many of the early telephone systems as private lines to communicate with the neighbors. Often using the ubiquitous barbed wire fences that divided much of the land west of the Mississippi. It was simple. In order to turn the steel fence wires into a telephone line, they simply had to connect the telephone to the fence with a piece of smooth wire. The signal from the phone then passed through the smooth wire and along the length of the barbed wire, either to a switchboard or to other houses down the line. It was common to have as many as 20 telephones wired together, all of which would ring simultaneously with each call, regardless of who was making it and who they were trying to reach. In order to help people know if the call was for them, the neighbors would agree upon codes. Three short rings for you, two long rings for me. Few inventions can claim to have changed the path of history as much as the telephone, from simple sounds being down a wire to holding the world knowledge in our hands, to the ever-evolving tech that lets us communicate with others thousands of miles away and altering the way we live time and time again. Here is a brief history of how the telephone has changed since the beginning. The telephone itself was more evolution than revolution building on a telegraph. So we start with America's very first technological network, a network that looked as though a giant spider had made it. The web of electric wires that carried telegraph signals everywhere. This would have been a common view of Boston in the late 19th century. As innovative as it was to be able to send coded messages via electrical impulses through a wire, it had one crucial limitation. This setup could only take one message at a time. Each message would consist of dots and lines that in a particular order would represent a letter or number in the alphabet. Say you wanted to send a message saying hello. The person receiving the message would see something like this. By the second half of the 19th century, the race to find something better was on. The two main competitors of the race included Alexander Graham Bell and Alicia Gray. First, the goal was to transmit multiple tones down one telegraph line, and in 1875, Gray patented the electric telegraph for transmitting musical tones and unknowingly became the father of the synthesizer. It wasn't long though before it became apparent that transmitting human speech had even more potential. One year later, the telephone was close to becoming real, as both inventors rushed to get their sophisticated creations patented first. It was Bell who received the patent first, becoming the inventor of the telephone. Well, maybe. Just asking the question of who invented the telephone first can make you lightheaded. So here we go. On Valentine's Day, February 14, 1876, Bell's paperwork officially hit the books, and just hours later, Gray's work was also submitted into the patent office. A month later, it's Bell who successfully transmits speech, but there are allegations that Bell's transmission used liquid transmitters very similar to Gray's which is suspicious because only Gray had included such details in the original patent work. Allegations claim that Bell's team slipped $100 to the patent examiner's pocket for a little peek at Gray's work. Hundreds of legal cases followed, and till this day, experts continue to debate whether it was Bell or Gray, or any of the other several inventors who were also working on voice transmission tech. It's unclear who deserves the title of telephone inventor, but we do know who actually got the patent, Alexander Graham Bell. A few years after the patent war, the Bell Telephone Company, now known as AT&T, had exchanges in most of the U.S. major cities. By the end of the company's first year of operation, there were 3,000 phones, that is one for every 10,000 people. And when Bell's patent expired in 1893, there were 260,000 phones, that is one for every 250 people. As the telephone caught on, new developments came thick and fast. Early phone calls involved switchboard operators who would manually connect you to the phone line of the person who you wanted to talk to. When phones started making their way into residential homes, operators started being replaced by automatic switches. This was good because operators were notorious for listening in on conversations, something many customers wanted to avoid. 
As transmitter tech improved, the candlestick phone became increasingly obsolete, replaced around the late 1920s by models like these which combined the transmitter and receiver into one headset. By 1969, 90% of US households had a telephone, but this world shift in tech still had one downside, wires. It was Motorola that captured the public's imagination in 1973 when they premiered the cordless phone. The first cell phone. Portable, made by Motorola, which weighs only 30 ounces. Right now, businessmen and women are major users of radio telephones where cellular is in service. But more people will take advantage of cellular as its benefits become apparent. Only weighing two and a half pounds with a battery life of 20 minutes and costing around $10,000 in today's money. Not pretty by today's standard, but Motorola's breakthrough sparked a global obsession with mobile telephones. What followed was the mobile revolution, saw mobile phones get more powerful, more affordable, and more miniature, while the telegraph made a comeback in the form of text message. By 1998, there were nearly 70 million US mobile subscribers, a figure that would double just four years later. At this time, Bluetooth, 3G, color screens, and cameras were making phones truly multifunctional. It's ironic how, as today's phones get more advanced, we use them less and less for the extra transmission of our voices. A problem that so many great minds worked on to find a solution and change the course of history. And it's evident that we will continue to change cell phones. But how will the cell phone continue to change us? Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Mind Motion out.